Hey guys and welcome back to Negas Ordinary and it's Spooky, Spooky Season video number two. Today we have a really interesting case. It's kind of a spiritual spooky case we speak about reincarnation. Reincarnation is a very controversial topic. It is deeply rooted in a lot of philosophical traditions from India and ancient Greece. But basically, reincarnation is the philosophical belief that after the physical body dies, the soul goes on to begin a new life. You could reincarnate as an animal, but it is said your reincarnation depends on the life that you lived on earth and what lessons you learned and what lessons you will need to continue learning on your soul's journey. So I actually done a video on TikTok going into the depth of explaining about reincarnation and how many souls your life has left. So I will leave a link in the description and if you want to check that out and see how many lives your soul has left. Very very interesting video. I actually stitched with it as well because I just found it so interesting and perplexing to the mind like but yeah. yeah definitely check it out it'll be linked below i'm on my 10th life i can't remember what i'm on oh my first. first so today's case we are heading back to 1957 and like always all the information that we are going to be discussing in this video we have obtained from multiple sources on the internet and in news articles we've just accumulated all the information into this video in our own words so without further ado, this is the case of the Pollock twins. So John and Florence Pollock were a married couple who lived in Hexham, England back in the 1950s. So John and Florence Pollock met in the early 1940s and John was a very devout Roman Catholic and Florence was a Protestant. So they were from both very different backgrounds. They fell in love and Florence decided to convert to the Catholic Church. Once Florence done this, a few years later, the couple got married and they decided to settle in Hexham, where they decided that they would open a milk and fruit and veg shop together. So yeah, everything was going well for the couple. In 1946, John and Florence had their first child. They welcomed a little girl and named her Joanne. Five years later, they welcomed a second daughter and named her Jacqueline. So while John and Florence were busy with their family business, Florence's mother mostly brought up the girls. But in their free time, John and Florence made sure they done some activities with the girls to ensure that they knew that they were loved. So Joanna and Jacqueline were extremely close. They had a very, very deep bond. They done everything together. They enjoyed dressing up and play acting, putting on shows for their grandmother and their parents. And because Joanna was five years older than Jacqueline, it was almost like she mothered her in a sense. She was very protective over her and she would do anything to make her happy. So as kids do, they often have accidents when they're younger. I know I have a few scars from falling off scooters and the likes. You do too, don't yeah, you? Same, yeah. We actually have a, the exact same scar on the exact same knee. Both from falling off scooters. At the exact same age. At the exact same age, before we knew each other. So weird. Mm -hmm. Destiny. Nice. So when Jacqueline was three, she fell into a bucket and really hurt herself. As a result of this fall, she was left with a scar on her forehead that was very prominent, especially when the weather got a bit colder. So when Joanna learned how to talk, she would often tell her mother and grandmother that she would never be a lady. And they both thought this was pretty weird. So as we mentioned, the family were pretty religious and attended church services quite regularly. So one morning in May 1957, Joanna, who was 11, and Jacqueline, who was six, were on their way to church with their friend Anthony when they were struck by a car. The driver of this car was a woman who had lost custody of her children. And apparently this woman was suicidal and she had taken a concoction of prescription and they suspect non-prescription, possibly illegal drugs that morning and had gotten to her car to ultimately end her own life. There are also people who say that because she couldn't handle not having her own children, she intentionally went out to hit other people's children, which is incredibly disturbing, but also that's just hearsay, that's just speculation. And after this, this woman was taken to a psychiatric hospital. Unfortunately, Joanna and Jacqueline were killed instantly in this event and their friend Anthony was taken to hospital who did die later from his injuries. 
The Pollock parents were devastated by the tragic death of their two daughters, Jacqueline and Joanna. After their deaths, Florence suffered severe depression. She kept replaying the horrifying events over and over in her head and cried all the time. But John clung to his faith and found solace in this. So John had a vision on the day of the accident that his daughters would be reincarnated at some point as twins. And Florence obviously thought this was completely ludicrous. It caused a lot of issues within the marriage and at one point they actually did consider separating. This is also ironic that John was hellbent on the girls being reincarnated because obviously in the Catholic religion reincarnation isn't accepted. So this was very controversial for the time but John said he had a vision and he believed that his daughters would be reincarnated as twins. And strangely enough, one year later, Florence became pregnant. Now when she went for her scans and everything like that, the doctor said she was carrying one baby. But when she gave birth, she gave birth to identical twin girls. Florence gave birth to the girls on the 4th of October 1958 and they named the girls Gillian and Jennifer. When Gillian and Jennifer were still babies, the Pollocks decided to move to a different city to start fresh. As the twins grew, Florence and John started to notice some uncanny similarities between Gillian and Jennifer, Joanna and Jacqueline. Obviously, they were going to have some similarities as they were their siblings, but these similarities were just so peculiar that John and Florence couldn't wrap their head around. So the first noticeable similarity between the girls was that Jennifer had a birthmark on her forehead in the exact same place that Jacqueline had her scar from the bucket incident. So as the girls were growing a little older, they started to even behave like Joanna and Jacqueline. Like Joanna and Jacqueline, Gillian and Jennifer were extremely close. They liked to play dress up. They liked to put on shows for their parents and their grandmother. Also, one of the twins also murdered the other twin, just like that in the case of Jacqueline and Joanna. And when the twins were about three, Florence and John had given them some toys that Joanna and Jacqueline used to play with. And immediately, you know the way like siblings will fall out over toys, like that's mine and they fight over toys? No, it wasn't like that at all in this case. Gillian went over to Joanna's doll straight away and Jennifer went over to Jacqueline's and they both said, this is my doll and this is my doll. And they told Florence that they got these dolls from Santa Claus. When in fact, Jacqueline and Joanna did get those dolls from Santa Claus for Christmas. Both of the girls knew all of the names of Joanna and Jacqueline's dolls. Now, the girls, Gillian and Jennifer, had never even been told about Joanna and Jacqueline. Of course, Florence and John were going to tell them, but they were just a bit too young at that age to kind of grasp the concept of that. So, how did they know? All that they knew. So as we said, the Pollocks left Hexham when the girls were born, but they decided to return for a visit when the girls had turned three. And once they arrived in Hexham, the twins immediately said that they wanted to go to the swings in the park and led the way without ever being there before. And the girls noticed the school that Jacqueline and Joanna had attended and they said that that was their school. Gillian and Jennifer were also petrified of cars and they were known to scream whenever a car would pass by. Once the girls were having a little private conversation when they were playing with their dolls and Florence was just listening just to see what was like, you know, going on, if they were going to say something funny or, you know, like normal parents would do. And the girls were talking about something very dark. They were discussing a car accident in which Gillian was standing over Jennifer rubbing her head and saying blood is coming out of your eyes that's where the car hit you and John had gone to the morgue to identify the girls bodies after the accident and he said that Jacqueline's head was bandaged right above the eyes and after the accident happened Florence had decided to leave the family business but when she did work there before the accident she used to wear a smock and when the twins were around four, John was doing some painting. So he put on Florence's smock and immediately Jennifer ran up to him asking him why he was wearing Mammy's coat. Bearing in mind she had never seen this before. So the American psychiatrist Ian Stevenson 
who had devoted his life to studying reincarnation. He actually believed reincarnation could boost medical development. Well, he caught wind of the Pollock twins' tale and he decided to go over and study them. So along with the Pollock twins, James actually studied 14 cases of suspected reincarnation. And in 1987, he published a book called Children Who Remember Their Past Lives. And the Pollock twins' case is probably the case that contains the most substantial evidence favoring the idea of reincarnation. And what's weirder is, because Jennifer and Gillian were confirmed identical twins, Jennifer's birthmark could not be explained by genetics because it's just unexplainable how Gillian didn't have the same. There is this phenomenon called the maternal impression. It basically alludes to the fact that when a mother is pregnant, her psyche and her thoughts can impact the brains of the fetus. People brought the theory forward that because of the trauma, Florence was suffering from losing her daughters, Joanna and Jacqueline, that maybe she imprinted this mental image into her unborn twins and that's why Julian and Jennifer can remember so much. I don't personally believe in that. It's very, it's just peculiar, isn't it? Yeah. That would not explain the birthmark situation. A lot of people believe that it's not definitive proof of Ian Stevenson's studies because the only people who witnessed this behavior were their parents and yeah, the girls actually forgot about this. As they grew older, their past life memories disappeared. And they went on to live pretty normal lives. They were actually skeptical at one point about their parents' recount of them being the reincarnation of their deceased siblings. But one of the twins recently actually had a bit of a past life regression done and she, she vividly remembered being one of her deceased sisters. So who knows? They do say that in reincarnation that a lot of children will vividly remember up until a certain point and then their memories will just be wiped. So yeah, I think I believe this one. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah, very much so. So do you think this is a real story of reincarnation? Or do you think it's just a way for the parents to deal with their grief? Let us know down below in the comments. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button Give this video a like, turn on that little bell to be notified when we drop all of our spooky season videos and any other videos going forward. We'll have two more videos for you next week, so yeah, stay tuned. Bye! Bye.